Well, I'm Bob Bennett and I'm the sales manager in, at MCP in the UK and I'm also responsible for the business development of the SLM process throughout UK, Spain, Italy and France. SLM is one of the processes that came out of um, a university development in Germany and Fo doctors Fockler and Schwarzer uh, developed patents mostly to do with software on the SLM process and MCP became involved with them in 2002 to start the development of and the commercialization of their process. So we've been working with them for a number of years and we're now at a stage where we have a, a good robust product having worked on it since 2002. And we're now on the, the Mark II machine. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've introduced a small machine, the SLM100, for doing, for doing micro components. Like, like most of these powder bed technologies, it, it's a, a layer building system. So the main difference is that we're melt, fully melting each particle of metal. Okay, and that's the main difference from laser sintering. So we lay down from a, a vertical hopper into a movable hopper. So we've got hopper one, hopper two, material is dumped into hopper two, and that drags a layer across the build chamber, an auger moves and dumps powder into the build space and there's a soft wiper blade which then evens that out. So each time that's done, um, then where the laser hits the metal powder, it fully melts it. Now what that means, we can use um, single component metals rather than having to alloy lower melting point metals and I think that's probably the unique thing about the process. On the three different machines we've got a 50 watt laser, 100 watt laser or a 200 watt laser. So we can, uh, all fibre based lasers, so I would say the highest spec laser on the, on the larger machine is a 200. Well we, we can actually build up to, now it used to be 45 degrees but it's now about 60 degrees uh, without having to have supports at all but in some cases you want supports there because unlike the plastics, met the metal parts on, on all of these systems have to be tied down to the plate that you're building them on because of the inherent stresses that are generated. So in some cases we're using supports to support the parts, but in other cases we're using the supports to actually tie them down to the build plate to stop them bending upwards. So it's, it's actually geometry specific but we can build overhangs down to about 60 degrees without the need for supports if necessary. But what we found is if you introduce heat into the build plate, you actually reduce. You're never, with these systems, with the laser-based powder systems, I won't say we never, but at the moment we can't see a way of completely eliminating stress, but we can minimise it by using heated plate, um, using various temperatures dependent on which material you're processing. Um, we do have interest from electronics, especially with a new machine because for, for doing micro components, but medical is, is the leading thing. What we found is that commercially, medical sector is far more willing to put its hand in its pocket for a new technology at the moment. There seems to be lots of money swimming around for development in the medical sector. Aerospace is interested, but um, when we first launched the product, our machine wasn't that great at doing big, chunky, thick wall sections. And of course, the, there's also a lot of qualification in both medical and aerospace. So we aimed it specifically at one area to get the thing off the ground. Automotive, and in the UK, Formula One, has, has, been, um, has been generating a lot of interest. But a, as yet, I think they're waiting to see how how things pan out, because all of these technologies, not just ours, all, all of these technologies are in their infancy, so to speak, on a commercial basis. So I think the Formula One guys are waiting to see what happens. We're using a melt pool, so ideally, for the best results in getting a good melt pool is to have spheroidal powder. So any powders that can be usually argon gas atomized, gives you a nice spheroidal powder, so um, really any metals and so far we're doing several grades of titanium, uh, commercially pure, titanium 6-7 which is niobium based, titanium 6-4 um, vanadium based 
um, stainless steel 316L, tool steel, several grades of tool steel, um, but H13 is the leading one that we have. Aluminium we've just started on and we're producing aluminium um, parts as demonstration parts, cobalt chrome, and we also have um, customers processing gold and SMAs, shape memory alloys. And that's the really interesting thing for the electronics on the um, small machine making tiny actuators with SMAs. Okay, the, the larger machine, the, S, the uh, SLM 250, is a, a 250 cube, 250 millimeters cubed, and the smaller machine is 100 millimeters diameter by 60 millimeters height. And the layer thickness that they're... they're layer, thick, layer thickness, 20 microns up to 100. And is that, is, is that a function of particle size or...? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're going to use um, a powder that's 10 to 45 microns with a, with a, a mean of 26, which is, a, which is a standard powder for us, you won't want to be building in 20 micron layers because you're, you're going to have problems. So it is particle size specific. To talk about the philosophy of where we wanted to go, um, we saw that there were other technologies out there several years ago which were making parts for tooling. Now at that time, when we first launched this technology, our surfaces finishes weren't fantastic. So we thought, well, let's bypass tooling, let's look at something else, let's look at actual parts. And because we were using single component metals like stainless steel and cobalt chrome at that time, which were both approved for medical, aerospace, automotive type applications. We thought, well, let's, let's go straight to the parts. So the parts, parts, parts being Im implantable um, bone joints, um, and to start with, non-mechanical parts, so um, skull caps. Mm -hmm. But all of this was on research rather than banging it straight in because of all the approvals that were needed. So. Um, there's still an awful lot of work going on. We've just completed uh, a series of implants in, at Perth Hospital in Western Australia using titanium 6-7 uh, for the actual acetabular cup. Now that's worked out very well. But I think we're getting to the stage with the metal manufacturing where it's going, I think in the next two to three years, these machines will be making, you know, there's several people involved in this area. I think the technologies in general are going to be involved in low volume production. I think one of the key things is designers are going to have to, not have to, but will be able to rethink the way they design a part because they won't be thinking about designing it for die casting. They'll be, th they'll be able to design it without thinking about the tooling. So they'll be able to put the features in that they actually want. And it'll start off with low volume production. With the laser based systems, um, there are lots of areas being worked on with multi lasers and um, high wattage lasers to see if the build speed can be improved but I think more likely it's going to be multi machines rather than speeding up each machine.